Okay, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brothers and sisters. Okay, um, I've been assigned uh, another topic today. We, we did the topic uh, actually already in the AIM uh, Institute's program where we talked about the, uh, the, the arguments of those who deny the punishment of the grave. And inshallah, as I promised, uh, I will be uploading all the lectures that I do in this conference on my YouTube channel, and below them in the video description, you will find that I have a link to those PDF files that I'm using that you have on the screen. So if you ever wanna get those notes, just go to my YouTube channel. You don't have to subscribe, you don't, don't worry about it. Just go to the YouTube channel, download the PowerPoints, and then keep them as notes, inshallah, for yourself, uh, for the benefit, inshallah. I don't expect to take too long on this, because I know you guys are probably pretty exhausted by now, but I think, brothers, uh, I think one of the main objectives of this uh, conference, aside from obviously the knowledge, which is the most really important thing in this, is that if we, we find, we should find ourselves coming out of this conference with our hearts at least a little bit softened. Uh, because remem remembering death and remembering the grave and the hereafter, I mean, this is the whole point of it, is to, is to soften up our hearts. Visiting the grave sites and all that, this is the point, right? So keep, keep this intention in your minds, inshallah. I mean, aside from having this beautiful academic, foundation coming out of this conference and learning a lot, uh, it should come with khashya as well, right? So this should be an aim that we should all have in our minds. It's not just about memorizing and saying hadith, it's, it's great, but it should come with the fruits of it as well. But this is obviously the means to get to it. Um, I've been given the topic, the end of this world, and end of this world is a very, it's a very generic topic. I mean, you can talk about so many things, and mashallah, the shiuch, my elders and my seniors have already spoken a lot about a lot of different things, so I'm just going to try to touch on a few uh, yani points that, inshallah, will help us. So let's go to the first, uh, to the first slide here. Um, and uh, yesterday, Sheikh Kamil Ahmed, Hafizullah, he was talking about the, uh, some of the minor signs, and, and uh, I just want to, as I like to do normally, recommend readings and books. Uh, Sheikh Umar uh, Suleiman Al-Ashqar, rahimahullah, he wrote a whole series called the Islamic Creed series. And uh, volume five of that is called The Minor Resurrection, What Happens After Death in Light of the Quran and the Sunnah, as you can see on the screen. And um, he discussed many things in this book, and among them, the topic which is very interesting and very fascinating to us nowadays, the Mahdi. Um, he, he spoke about that, as Sheikh Karim Abu Zayd yesterday called it the transitional sign, because it takes you from the minor to the Major, and that's subhanAllah, I had the, the same feeling in my heart that this is what, exactly what it is, because after that, you know, the Dajjal and so on. Um, so in chapter 5 of his book, he talked about Al-Mahdi, and then he gets into the, uh, the smoke, Al-Dukhan, Al-Dajjal, the descent of Isa ibn Maryam, Ya'juj al majuj the end of Islam and the removal of the Qur'an and the death of good people with that, that soft wind. Mankind's return to uh, Ibadatul Asnam, the idol worship, Destruction of the Kaaba by the Suwa Qatayn, the rising of the sun from the west, and of course when that happens, that's it. You cannot repent and, and become a believer, and the belief will not help anyone at that time. It's too late. May Allah save us from, from, from those kinds of fitan. The emergence of the beast, the dabba and the fire which will gather the people. So these are the ones that lead, lead towards you know, the, 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 the Qiyamah itself that, to take place. So on the, next, um, on the next slide after that, um, this is the volume six of the series of, of the Sheikh Rahimahullah, Dr. Amar al-Ashqar. Um, this is volume six, and it's called The Day of Resurrection. Now he's talking about Al-Qiyamah Al-Kubra, because Al-Qiyamah Al-Sughra, the minor Al-Qiyamah is when we pass away, because this is when it starts for everybody individually, right? But Al-Qiyamah Al-Kubra is when the actual day takes place. I highly recommend that every Muslim library should have this whole series. He starts by talking about belief in Allah, uh, his books, his angels, gets into the pillars of Iman, and the very last one is about Al-Qadr, uh, predestination, which is the thinnest one, which makes sense because the Rabbi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us, don't talk about Qadr too much. He gets into the Qadr and just gives us enough in order to look at the deviant sects and what they said about it and what the, what the haq is about that. Um, so look it up online. I know everything is available nowadays as a PDF, um, but again, grab the PDF, read it, and making an intention, hopefully, in your mind that you would like one day to buy the book. You know, that way you support the publishers. In, in this case, it's Islamic, uh, International Islamic Publishing House. Okay, so my presentation relies mainly on this book. And um, on the next slide after that, 
the first thing we, we say is that everything will perish. You should always remember that كُلُّ مَنْ عَلَيْهَا فَانْ كُلُّ مَنْ عَلَيْهَا فَانْ Whosoever is on, uh, is on it or the earth uh, will perish. Uh, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says كُلُّ شَيْءٍ هَالِكٌ إِلَّا وَجْهَا Everything will perish save his face. رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ And when the day comes, the trumpet will be blown. And this trumpet blast will put an end to life on earth and in the heavens. And the trumpet will be blown and all who are in the heavens and all who are on the earth will swoon away except him whom Allah wills. So it's a huge and destructive blast. It will be very quick to the point that a man will raise a morsel of food to his mouth but will not be able to eat it. So it'll happen and everything just freezes. Done. A single sayha. A single blast will seize everyone while they're disputing and they will not be able to make a bequest or return to their family. So the, the scene is described by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala يعني, and it's shown that we are able to, to, to put that you know, graphically in our minds and see what's, what's going to happen with it. The angel Israfil, the next slide, Israfil, he is the one who's assigned to blow the trumpet. And unlike uh, Malik al Maut, which we don't know his name, but Israfil has been named. The Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if you can jump to the next slide, brother, but uh, the angel Israfil, has told us that, what, that the one who will blow the trumpet is ever prepared to do so since the time Allah created him. This is, this is basically his job. In Mustadrak al Hakim, it is narrated that Abu Huraira, radiallahu anhu, said that the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, since the time when the one who will blow the trumpet was appointed, his eyes are ever ready, looking towards the throne, fearing lest the command is issued or will be issued before he blinks. He hasn't blinked. As if his eyes are two brilliant stars. Can you imagine this great creation of Allah, this angel, is just waiting, looking at the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the command to... That's what he's waiting to do since the beginning of creation. Yani right now he's waiting. Allahu Akbar. Yani just think about that. Subhanallah al-Azim. The next slide is that the trumpet will be blown on a Friday, Yawm al-Jumu'ah. Uh, the Messenger وسلم, said, as reported by Abu Hurairah, the best day on which the sun rises is Friday. On this day, Adam was created. He entered paradise on Friday. This day will be, he was expelled from paradise, and the hour will only come on a Friday, Yawm al-Jumu'ah. The apparent meaning of the Quran shows that the trumpet will be blown twice. There are a hadith that support this view, and other scholars said that there are three, but those, who are, uh, those, who, those uh, opinions are not as, as strong of opinions. And we can see here, for example, in the Quran, يَوْمَ تَرْجِفُ الرَّاجِفَةَ تَتْبَعُهَا الرَّادِفَةَ Two are mentioned, right? On the day when the first blowing of the trumpet is blown, the earth and the mountains will shake violently, and everybody will die. The second blowing of the trumpet follows it, and everybody will be resurrected. So we can see here clearly that we have two uh, uh, blows of the trumpet. Another one is ونفخ في الصور فصاعق ما في السماوات وما في الأرض إلا من شاء الله ثم نفخ فيه أخرى فإذا هم قيام ينظرون. Um, and this is in Surah Al-Zumar, chapter 39. And the trumpet will be blown, and all who are in the heavens and all who are on the earth will swoon away, except him whom Allah wills. Then it will be blown a second time, and behold, they will be standing, looking on, waiting. And in uh, Al-Bukhari and Muslim. Abu Huraira narrates that the Prophet ﷺ said, what is between the two trumpet blasts is 40. And they said, oh Abu Huraira, 40 days. Abu Huraira refused to answer. They said, oh, okay, four months, he refused to answer. F 40, 40 years, refused to answer. He didn't say any more than what he knew. Radiallahu anhu. Like I said, there are other Scholars who said that it'll be three and they, they tried uh, basically use the same evidences as the ones who said two and they said the one that shocks people is separate from the one that makes them die and the one that makes them resurrect and Allahu Alam but the appearance of the Quran shows that it's just two. The next slide after that, the next one is called, we have, we're talking about now the resurrection. <clears throat> Everyone will stand after the second blow of the trumpet. The bodies will grow from the ground after Allah sends down the water just as plants grow. That is why we see in the Quran that Allah uses this parable many times in the Noble Quran when describing the resurrection. You know, Allah talks about how 
vegetation comes from the earth after the water comes down. Um, and so he uses that as, a, as, a, as an example for us to visualize how this will happen to us and how we'll come out of the ground in the same way as vegetation grows out of the ground. All created beings will be gathered together in one place. Mankind is gathered naked and uncircumcised, and the earth will be changed to another earth and the heavens. So we have the hadith here of the Messenger وسلم, in uh, Sahih Muslim. It says, then the trumpet will be blown and no one will hear it but tilt his head. Yani he, will, he will die. The first one to hear it will be a man who is, will be fixing his camel's drinking trough. He will fall unconscious and all the people will fall unconscious. Then Allah will send or send down rain like dew, yani tl, or a shadow, dhil. And Naman, one of the narrators of the hadith, wasn't sure whether it was tl or, or dhil, from which the bodies of the people will grow. Then the trumpet will be blown again and they will be standing looking on waiting. So you can see that in the hadith it mentions, uh, it mentions two. And of course, we, we already narrated or we already explained this, uh, this verse here. The first one, and then And the trumpet will be blown, and who, all who are in the heavens and all who are on the earth will swoon away, except him whom Allah wills. Then it will be blown a second time, and behold, they'll be standing looking on waiting. SubhanAllah. So these verses, the whole point is for us to really visualize what will happen. And it's important to keep in our, in our minds that these are not just stories of the future. These are facts that are, that are going to take place. And we have to yeah, make sure that we understand that. On the next slide, we get into the, the terrors of the day of uh, resurrection. Because we want to we picture the, 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 the scenes, the scene that's going to take place. The earth will be shaken and turned to powder. And I'm just summarizing verses here because in the, in, in the book, uh, volume 6 of the Creed series of uh, Dr. Omar Al-Ashqar, you can get into the details of all that, but we're presenting here, so I can't get into every single thing. The mountains will be made to pass away and will be blown away. The seas will become as blazing fire or, over, or will overflow. The sky will be rent asunder and will shake with a dreadful shaking. The sun will be wound round. It will be wrapped up in darkness and will disappear. The shams kuwirat, right? The moon will be eclipsed. The stars will fall and their light will be extinguished. And the entire system of the universe will collapse. And in this whole order that we have today... SubhanAllah, will come to an end. And a beautiful verse that we should all look at and think about, and again in Surah Al-Zumar, that Allah will grasp the earth in His hand on the day of the resurrection. And will roll up the heavens in His right hand when He says, وَمَا قَدَرُ اللَّهَ حَقْ قَدْرِهِ وَالْأَرْضُ جَمِيعًا قَبْضَتُهُ يَمُقِيَمَتِهِ وَالسَّمَاوَاتُ مُطْوِيَةٌ بِيَمِينِهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَىٰ عَمْ مُشْتِكُونَ خلاص, we, he is like him. We know this. But he described himself in ways we have to accept them. This is in the Quran. The next slide. The state of the disbelievers on the day of resurrection. So let's talk about the kuffar and how they will be. Because again, we're talking about the end of the world and what kind of situation will be. In summary, they'll be in humiliation, regret, and despair. Because you know, we talked about the situation in the qabr, what happens to them, and, uh, and so on. This is just a preview for them of what's going to happen. يَوْمَ يَخْرُجُونَ مِنَ الْأَجْدَةِ سِرَاعًا كَأَنَّهُمْ إِلَى نُصْبًا يُفِضُونَ خَاشِعَةً أَبْصَارُهُمْ تَرَقْهُمْ ذِلَّةً ذَلِكَ the day when they will come out of their graves quickly as racing to a goal with their eyes lowered in fear and humility. Ignominy uh, covering them all over, that is the day which they were promised. No one can say from them, no one told me anything. You know, the messengers came, the prophets came. We are the inheritors of the prophets. You know, we are, we are in, in very many in the world and people know, I mean, for the most part, what Islam is. No one can, can claim ignorance. And even those who didn't get the message, Allah will test them in a specific way. So everybody will ultimately get the message. But those are exceptions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَنذِرْهُمْ يَوْمَ الْحَسْرَةِ يَدْخُذِي الْأَمْرُ وَهُمْ فِي غَفْلَةٍ وَهُمْ لَيْمَنُونَ And warn them, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, on the, of the day of grief and regrets, when the case has been decided, well now, they are in a state of carelessness and they believe not. So, يَوْمَ الْحَسْرَةِ That's one of the names of the day of Qiyamah. That it's a, stay, it's a day when there's a lot of regret taking place. People look at the past and they wish they did certain things. Even the believer will wish he did more. SubhanAllah. On the next slide, we have more uh, about the, the kuffar, what will happen to them. Their deeds are worthless. Nothing other than Islam is accepted. Right? And we shall turn to the whatever deeds they, the disbelievers, polytheists or sinners did. And we shall make this such deeds as scattered floating particles of dust. That's the answer for those who say, well, what if this, this believer or this uh, mushrik or whatever is, is, is a good person? 
Allah gives them their, their reward here in this life. The fact that He's given them to eat and drink and health, and He's already given them what they, what they, what they, uh, what they wanted. They got it. And so when it comes to the Akhirah, because their foundation wasn't Tawheed, that realm or that part of their existence, they're not going to be able to get through without Tawheed, period, at all. It's a, it's a different set of rules. Here, Allah gives it to everybody. Yani Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, or Rasulullah mentioned in a hadith that yani Allah gives this dunya to those whom He loves and those whom He doesn't love. But He only gives faith to those whom He loves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? So, just because I'm a Muslim, okay, I have, I have wealth, may Allah give us all the faith. But if a kafir gets wealth, it doesn't mean Allah loves that person, necessarily. Right? And the same thing with a, with a believer. It could be a sinning believer. To earn Allah's love, he has to work harder than that. So Allah gives this world to everybody. The Muslim, the kafir, the sinner, the... And some people that are great Muslims and believers may not have much dunya. But again, it doesn't decide whom Allah loves or doesn't love. The disbelievers will dispute with each other. They will even dispute with their objects of worship, their, 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 their asnam. The weak will dispute with their leaders and, and put the blame on them. They will dispute with their companion devils, with their qareen. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala summarizes, summarizes this in a beautiful verse. Al-akhillā'u yawma adhim ba'aduhum li-ba'adhan a'adhun illa al-muttaqīn. Al-akhillā', not just friends, close friends, intimate friends. That's what a khalil is, right? On the day will be foes to one another except al-muttaqūn, except the pious. This is the friendship or this, this yani, uh, the khalil, that this will, this will continue to the hereafter. Because they were yani, loving each other for Allah's sake and for that destination which is the jannah. May Allah make us all uh, together there. The next, the next slide, now we talk about the sinners, the sinners among the believers. Al-Usa, and al mu'minin. Just because you're a Muslim or not a Muslim, it doesn't mean that we can just do whatever we want. We've got to be careful. Those who did not pay the zakah, for example, their wealth will appear as a huge bald snake with two black spots over its eyes and sees the sinner. This is mentioned in the hadith. And it's explained by this verse over here. So let, let not those who covetously withhold of that which Allah has bestowed on them and of his bounty well think that it is good for them and so they do not pay the obligatory zakah. That's the tafsir of the ayah. Nay, it will be worse for them. The things which they covetously withheld shall be tied onto their necks like a collar on the day of resurrection. And this is explained by the hadith about the snake. So just because I'm a Muslim and I don't pay the zakah, I don't get away with it. If the wealth was gold and silver, it will be heated as plates of fire to brand its owner. If it was livestock, then the livestock will be made to torment the owner, trample over him and bite him. So Allah will, will make these things come back to haunt you on the day of standing. And we're talking about right now uh, punishments that are happening as people are waiting for the hisab. We're not talking about paradise and hell. That comes after, right? And this is something that other shiuch will discuss. But we're just talking about waiting. And this is what's happening. People are waiting for the, for the accountability. On the next slide, another example of, of sins which are really, really serious if the believer is, is guilty of them. So we have here, يعني, الْقِيَامَةِ We have three things happening. So Allah describes one type of people, uh, believers, that will, will earn this kind of punishment. And there are others that are described in the hadith that also will receive these three punishments. What are they? Verily, those who conceal what Allah has sent down of the book and purchase a small gain therewith of worldly things. They eat into their bellies nothing but the fire. Allah will not speak to them on the day of resurrection, number one, nor purify them, and theirs will be a painful torment. Those are, the, those are they who have purchased error at the price of guidance and torment at the price of forgiveness, so how about they are for evil deeds which will push them on the fire. So, we have people that are, for example, the arrogant ones will be gathered like small ants in the form of men, overwhelmed by humiliation. So someone who is arrogant will be made to be like the size of an ant, and everyone else is looking at them. They'll be humiliated and, and maybe even trampled upon. And there are certain people with whom Allah will not speak, nor will purify them, and for them is a painful punishment, such, such as those who conceal the knowledge. What does concealing the knowledge mean? Yani, the knowledge could be necessary, as, we, as the scholars say, uh, بِلِسَانِ الْمَقَالِ أَوْ بِلِسَانِ الْحَالِ 
But in al-Maqal means someone literally comes, like you, you know something of the, of the religion, Allah has bestowed knowledge upon you. Someone comes to ask you the question and you withhold. Or you tell them something else because of trying to purchase this life for the, you know, in exchange for the hereafter. This is a serious sin. If, if, if someone needs to know something about the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you know the answer or can at least direct them to the people that know the answer, it's upon you to do this. You can't hide them. You can't hide this, this, this knowledge that Allah bestowed upon you. Or it could be bilisan al-hal, which means that it's based, not, not, not that someone came to ask you this question, but someone who's a scholar, someone who has knowledge and so on, sees that people are suffering from a problem or they're committing a sin or they're, not, they're falling short of a, of a fard or, or an obligation, then this scholar or this talib ilm, whoever they are, they should do something about that, not just sit back and do nothing. And obviously the assumption here is that you're either approached with this question or you see a situation and no one else is doing it. Now if others are doing it and fulfilling this obligation, then Allah alam, you're not going to be blamed for not saying something because you might be in a situation where maybe it's not the wisest thing to do it at that time. Maybe you want to wait for the right time to say it in the right situation and the right occasion. That, that Perhaps like I was saying yesterday to another question, people are, are, are in need of you to do something for them. You take the opportunity and you tell them the haq what it is because they need you now. Like Yusuf alayhi salam, what he did when they asked him to interpret the dreams that they had, what is the first thing he did? He, he explained tawheed to them straight out before he even gave them the answer. Look at the verses of Surah Yusuf. How many verses he's talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, tawheed, shirk and so on. And then when he interprets the, the dream, it's like a couple of lines. So the most of his speech was talking about yani, the religion. So the, the knowledge has to be shared. On the next slide, um, there are other people whom Allah will not speak to, nor will He purify them, and for them is a painful punishment. And again, I'm summarizing, but all these ahadith and things are mentioned in the book of Dr. Amar al-Ashqar, rahimahullah. Those who let their garments hang below their ankles, below the ankles. This is one of the ones that are mentioned in the hadith. Those who sell goods by means of false oaths. Wallahi, this only cost me this much, this only cost me that much in order just to sell it and get rid of it. You're basically lying. Those who remind others of their favors. Mannan. You did somebody a favor and then you keep reminding them over and over again. Remember I did for you last year? Remember I did for you yesterday? You know? just, just because you want to keep like making it sound like you did this person يعني, everything for them. in order to. And this is actually a form of humiliation for somebody. If you keep reminding them of the favors and okay, you did him a favor, خلاص, end the story. Why do you keep reminding him of it? Did you, th th then maybe that you didn't do it for the sake of Allah. If you keep reminding him. I lent you this money last year, I lent you this money, and you keep doing it. Allahu alam, that's not, that's not appropriate. Uh, those who withhold surplus water from others, this is mentioned in the hadith as well. One who betrays the allegiance to the leader if he doesn't grant him wealth. You know, the leader, uh, and it, the hadith basically says that if the leader gives, gives you wealth or gives you something, you uphold the bay'ah or the allegiance to this leader, but if he doesn't give you, then you, you want to break this bay'ah. This is another betrayal, basically. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about that, and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned in the hadith. An, an old man who commits zina, a king who tells lies, a poor man who is arrogant. Look at these three. The common denominator between these three is that these three people that committed these kinds of sins are not in a situation of fitna where they have to do these sins. So an old man who commits zina, why are you committing zina? You're 75 or you're 60. You're not 23, 25, uh, 18. When, when someone is young, this person, yani, yani, if he does something, okay, you can uh, maybe... Imagine the difficulty he's dealing with. Not that we're justifying the sin, but there's more fitna on the person who's 20, 25 than somebody who's 60, 65. Especially if he's already been married. Right? So this, this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yani, will not look at such a person or speak to that person and so on. A king who tells lies. Why is a king telling lies? A, a ruler of the Muslims or whoever. He's lying, lying, lying. May Allah save us. What reason, yani if, you lie, if, if you tell the truth, who's going to tell you why you're doing anything? You, you're the king, you're the ruler. No one's going to come and tell you uh, one, two, or three. You have no reason to lie. You know, it's, sometimes people are in a situation where they might lie in order to save themselves from something. They might get harmed if they tell the truth, or they might not say the entire truth in order to get out of the situation. But a ruler, a king, why are you lying? No reason to do it. No fitna for you to lie. A poor man who's arrogant, you have nothing. You're poor, you're in the low status of society. What are you being arrogant about? If someone gives someone wealth, money and this and that, and yeah, that's a fitna. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes wealth as a fitna. Bali a fitna, right? Allah says about it, about wealth. So someone in that situation, he's been tried with wealth, so he might think, well, look at me, I've got this money, I've got this car, I've got this, right? But someone who's poor, why are you being arrogant? You have no reason to be arrogant. 
You get it? And they're both wrong, but again, these are showing you that these are sins that, yeah, and there's, no reason, there's no reason for you to fall into these sins. Uh, uh, those who disobey their parents, and hurting their feelings, uh, putting them in a situation where they're, yeah, and they, you're not showing them humility and so on. And it doesn't mean like uh, unconditional obedience to your parents. You don't obey them every single thing. Like, you know, they, they, you know a parent, for example, can't tell you, let's say, uh, you have to study the subject, or you have to, there is, there are some boundaries that should be observed between parents and children. This is not an open check to like over uh, micromanage, let's say, the, 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 the son or the daughter. But at the same time, even if the parents do this, we have to be kind and we have to be understanding and we've got to find our ways around with them. Women who imitate men. Men who have no protective jealousy over their women folk. You know, they, 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 they're, the, the hadith describes the, the youth, as we hear this, this term a lot these days. The one who has intercourse with his wife from the back passage, so do me, basically. The one who drags his garments out of pride, right? So these are examples of sins which will, will earn that kind of a punishment for people uh, like that. Um, on the next slide, now we talk about the muttaqun, the pious. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about them. They will be spared the terrors and evils of that day. No doubt, verily the awliya, you know, the, the, the friends, the allies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no fear shall come upon them, nor shall they grieve. Those who believed and used to fear Allah much by abstaining from evil deeds and sins and by doing righteous deeds, you know, they got up and prayed at night, they asked Allah for forgiveness, uh, to save them and so on like that, and times when everyone's sleeping, they're up at night praying. From the, for them are glad tidings in the life of the present world and in the hereafter. Bil akhirah as well. Right? So this is an example of the, 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 the attributes of those who are awliyaullah. On the next slide, another uh, example which uh, definitely we hear a lot about. Yani, those who will be shaded under Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the shade of his throne. Um, Bukhari and Muslim narrate this. There are seven whom Allah will shade with his shade on the day when there will be no shade except his, his, his shade, basically. Uh, the just ruler, we just explained earlier about a ruler, who king who lies, right? But this is the complete opposite, a just ruler. Uh, the young man who grows up worshipping his Lord, talking about youth. And the emphasis is on someone who's young, who نَشَأْ فِي طَاعَةِ اللَّهِ, right? Uh, the man whose heart is attached to the masjid, to the masajid, to the mosque. Two men who love each other, one another for the sake of Allah, meeting and parting for that reason. Uh, not not uh, someone who like gets to know you because they have business to do, and then when the business is all done and finished, all no, nothing to do with money anymore. We just part ways, and no one knows anybody anymore. That's not the point. Not for dunya purposes, right? Not, nothing was wrong with developing business relationships with people, but we're talking about relationships for the sake of Allah. So you have a good brother, you did business with him. When the business is over, still keep in touch with him. Don't don't uh, just talk, I'm done with you, right? Uh, and then here's a big one: a man who was invited to sin by a woman of high status and beauty, but he says, "I fear Allah." It's a very difficult situation to be in that, isn't it? When, when a woman, uh, yani this is one of the weaknesses, the biggest weaknesses for us men, right? Is women. And as Rasulullah mentioned this. So this is something that would earn that person that kind of, you know, that kind of uh, reward. A man who gives in charity so secretly that his left and hand does not know what his right hand gives. And he gives so much that he doesn't even keep track, basically, right? And a man who remembers Allah when he's alone and his eyes fill with tears. And this is something... Yeah, and may Allah grant us this, this more of this because these days, you know, uh, the hearts have become very, very solid. Yeah, and they're very qaswat al qalb is a problem today, and and this happens because of all the sins and all the things that we see and all the things that we hear. Uh, this affects us a lot. It makes us very, very stiff, and doesn't doesn't make us soft. You know, makes us very uh, rigid. I guess is the is the word to say. So you can see in this hadith that there are things that involve someone doing something an act of worship, or to, to voluntarily bring an action. And some of them have to do with someone who's abstaining from sin. Right? So both of them are rewarded highly. And uh, uh, another hadith basically emphasizes that uh, the Messenger Sallallahu said, those who love one another for the sake of Allah will be in the shade of the throne. And again, we saw that in the previous hadith. But there's one here which um, uh, people forget about. And it's in a hadith by itself, and that probably explains it why, because people think, oh, seven people, seven categories of people. This one is actually very important as well. Whoever, uh, the Rasul Sallallahu said, whoever shows leniency towards a debtor or writes off his debt, 
will be in the shade of the throne on the day of resurrection. And there are other hadith to this effect as well. So someone who borrowed money is in a difficult situation, um, and, uh, you, and, and, and what happens is he, he'll come to you, okay, I, I can't pay in this one. You keep giving him time, giving him time, giving him time. And some people ultimately say, you know what, I forgive you, right? This action will grant you that privilege of being under subhan- Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's shade of his, of his throne. And there are other hadith about this as well. In other, um, in other versions, um, uh, from, yeah, in Surah Al-Baqarah, there's a verse about that. وَمَا كَانَ ذُوْ عَسْرَةٍ فَنَظِرَةٌ إِلَىٰ And the, if you look at the tafsir of Ibn Kathir, it gets into all the hadith that support, that support that. Barakallah fiqum, I don't want to take too long. Jazakumullah khair. Uh, this is just showing the, the, final, the final slide. Um, if, brother, if you, can, if you can scroll a couple of slides. Um, like I said, the, the lectures I do here, some of us were taking pictures of these slides. Don't worry. I will upload them, inshallah, on my YouTube channel under the videos when I put them on my YouTube channel. So whatever lectures I did here, I will basically chop them from the video, put them on my channel, and then under it, you'll find these, all these things I presented in the video description. I know earlier today that one about hadith rejectors and stuff like that with, the, with people who denied the, the, the punishment of the grave. A lot of technical stuff in that one. And that one's probably an important set of notes you want to probably get your hands on. Jazakumullah khair, subhanakallah wa bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illa ant, astaghfiru wa tubu alayk. There's time for questions if, you, if there's any, otherwise we'll take a break and we'll wait for the next, uh, next talk, inshallah.